Welcome to Box Free with Stephanie. Today I want to show you how to make some basic foods using simple ingredients from scratch. And I hope you discover that cooking from scratch is fast and delicious. So let's cook together. Today we are going to make tomato bisque soup in bread bowls. So the first thing we're going to do is get our bread bowls going. I just pulled my dough out of my bread machine. This is just a basic yeast dough. Um, today I made three cups worth of a loaf of bread. This is just plain white bread. Um, no fancy recipe for this dough. Um, and I did three cups versus four cups because a four cup um, bread dough is like a two pound loaf. And I don't really want my bread bowls to be gigantic. So um, I did a three cup or one and a half pounds of bread for my six bread bowls. Okay, so you just take it out of your bread machine. If you don't have a bread machine, you just make a basic yeast dough for white bread. Um, and you could add wheat flour, whatever you need to, but whatever you prefer. I just like a plain white dough when I'm making bread bowls for soup. So now you take it out and you get most of the air out of it. And then I'm going to cut it into six equal parts. So, um, okay. And then we're going to do this. It doesn't really have to be so perfect, but I do want them all to match, I guess. So, um, I do want them to be as close to possible. There's three. Okay, now I'm going to grease my pan quickly because we're going to let these rise again. They've risen once in the bread machine, but we're going to let them rise again so they get really nice and big and beautiful. Then we're going to cut them open and make a hole and put our tomato bisque inside. It's just a really fun thing to make in the fall. So while your hands are all nice and greasy, um, that's just great because then you can start working with your dough. And how you want to do your dough is you just want to smooth it out so that your top is really nice and pretty. Almost like making the hamburger buns. I don't know if you've seen that show, Sloppy Joe's and Hamburger Buns. Um, but it's the same thing where you just want a nice smooth top. You don't want your top to look like that all wrinkly and goofy. So you just smooth it out a little bit. Um, and I like these to be about the size of my palm and they can be a little bit thicker because we're going for that kind of big bowl. Um, so it doesn't really matter if you make like this one I can tell is already like way bigger. Look at that. Holy smokes. So I'm going to move this one to the middle of my pan because the middle of my pan will bake a little bit slower and I want that giant one to um, get baked all the way through. So we'll make our six bread bowls. So I'm going to just cover them with a little tea cloth and we'll let them sit. We're going to have them double in size. So that's what they look like right now. We're going to come back in about 45 minutes and we'll see if they're doubled. And then while these are baking, we're going to make our tomato bisque soup, which is also very delicious and pretty simple. We'll be back. We are back ready to bake our bread bowls. So we're going to uncover them and you can see that they have definitely doubled in size. They're just really nice looking right now. So I'm not going to brush them with egg wash. I just don't mind that nice plain golden look because I think they look gorgeous when they come out of the oven. So I'm going to pop them in. We're going to bake them for over 12 minutes and then we'll check it and maybe see if it takes 15. But my oven is preheated to 375. So I'm going to go ahead and put these in. And we'll give it 12 minutes. Okay, and now we're going to make tomato bisque. So tomato bisque is a soup that um, is very much like, I guess you could call it um, like tomato basil, creamy tomato basil. But I like to call it tomato bisque because it sounds fancy and it's fun and something a little bit different. So we're going to start with some celery. Um, and I'm trying to heat up my stove a little bit. So my recipe calls for two stalks of celery, but these look kind of small to me. So I'm doing four um, because I feel like a regular celery stock is much bigger. So we're just going to chop these up. And 
Um, it doesn't necessarily matter that you dice these so beautifully small because we're gonna use an immersion blender and make it like perfectly smooth. So um, a fine chop, you know, just a regular chopping is fine. We need about a good tablespoon of olive oil. My pan is probably not very hot yet, but we're gonna add our celery. Let that sit while we add our onion. This is a pretty big onion in my opinion, so that's the other reason why I wanted to have um, kind of enough celery to balance it. Um, I think this is the onion I got from the farmer's market, so it should be really delicious. And you're mostly making this with the celery and the onion to give it the good flavor, basically to make the stock really nice and taste delicious. Whoops, I forgot that one. I am going to add chicken broth, which will also give it a lot of flavor. Um, but the celery and the onion really do help make tomato bisque taste delicious. But if your family doesn't like onions and they don't like celery, you can make this without these ingredients. Um, I have another recipe that I kind of call my easy tomato bisque, which is really just um, canned tomatoes with cream cheese and milk and like no onions or celery. So um, I think that tastes pretty good. So it's really up to you. But I'm definitely following the recipe on this one and adding the full onion. I mean, that looks like a lot of onion, but I'm okay with it because I think it's really going to make our, um, our bisque taste very nice. So we want to cook this until the onions are translucent and clear. Um, it'll probably take about five minutes. Ooh, my eyes are watering from the onions. Woo. Oh boy, wow. Hmm. Okay. Wow, yeah, they are going at it. Um, I'm gonna just step away for a minute. We're gonna let this cook for five minutes until it gets translucent, and then we're gonna add our garlic. Our onions are cooking nicely with our celery. They're not quite translucent, but they are definitely getting there. Um, I'm going to add my salt. I want about a good teaspoon. Um, I want maybe half a teaspoon of pepper. You can, this is to taste. If you like stuff peppery, just add more. Um, I'm gonna add about a teaspoon of basil. I never have fresh basil. Sometimes I do, but most times I don't. So if you don't have the fresh stuff, that's okay. You can just use dried and it works fine in my opinion. Um, so then what we're gonna do is wait for this to cook just a couple more minutes. I'm gonna turn up my heat a little bit more. I want my celery and onions to be cooked very nicely before I add my garlic because I don't wanna overcook my garlic. And then once my garlic is basically ready, then I'm gonna add my canned tomatoes, my chicken broth, my sugar, and let that kind of simmer together. So I need to be patient right now um, before I add the rest of my stuff because then my onions really won't cook that much. So it smells really good and I really would like to just add everything right now, but I'm gonna give my onions a couple more minutes to get nice and clear. All right, it's been a good five minutes. My onions are definitely getting a little more translucent. My celery is looking a little softer. Um, so I think I'm about ready to add my garlic. My recipe calls for three cloves of garlic, but this one's kind of a monster. So um, I'm doing this little bitty one with the regular size. So I'm calling that three cloves. Um, whoopsie. Okay. So we're gonna add this. And I take my um, garlic peels off before so I can go again and basically get everything out of my garlic press. You can just put the whole thing in with its skin on and everything, um, but I don't know, I guess I don't mind peeling it off. So I'm gonna add all of my garlic because it's gonna add a nice flavor. Okay. Oh, and while I was waiting, I did add about another teaspoon of oil because it just looked a little bit dry and I don't want my onions to be dry when they're cooking. Um, I'm certainly not afraid of adding a little more olive oil to get a good taste. There's my bread bowls. All right. 
I'll let that sit for a minute while we check our bread bowls. Okay. They are not golden enough. So we're going to give them about three more minutes. And they're at 375 in there. So, um, yeah, I want them to be nice and golden because they look beautiful. They're nice, a nice size. So I want to let this sit for about a minute before I add my tomato sauce. So we'll be right back. My garlic has been in here for about a minute or two. I'm now ready to add the rest of my ingredients for the bisque soup. This is a really simple recipe because all you do is do a 28 ounce of crushed tomatoes. Add that in there. And then some chicken broth. Um, I usually make my own chicken broth. When I um, bake a chicken, I always boil the carcass in water and then, you know, strain everything out. And so this is four cups of chicken broth. And you can see my chunks of fat in there. I like that chicken flavor um, that you know, my chicken broth has. I certainly don't want the no fat chicken broth. I want that good flavor. And then we need about a tablespoon. Oh, there's my oven. Hang on. A tablespoon of sugar because when you're making an acidic tomatoey soup like this, you really need um, a good, you know, tablespoon or so um, to cut the acidity and just make it. I don't know, it's just too harsh otherwise. It's really interesting. Um, when you make just plain old um, tomato soup out of, you can do that with like salt and sugar. You use baking soda if you're gonna add like a milk thing so it doesn't curdle. Um, but you can do it just with sugar and salt and you'd be surprised how much sugar you need to add before your homemade tomato sauce, your tomato soup tastes like Campbell's tomato soup. But it is really easy to make plain tomato soup and that's kind of what this is. Whoops, I forgot about my dough. All right, let's check that. Okay, so they're still not very golden. Um, I want them to get nice and brown. I'm going to do three more minutes. I want those nice and brown because otherwise I feel like they might not be nicely baked in the middle because they're such a big ball of dough. So I'll just wait. I'm not worried about overcooking them at this point. Um, so it's better off to have a nice beautifully baked um, bread bowl. So we also need to let this simmer now for about 30 minutes or 20 minutes. I mean, if you didn't have any time and you had to cook it right away, had to serve it right away, you could go ahead and do your immersion blender, but I have some time. And if you don't have an immersion blender, you can actually put it in your blender and just get it nice and smooth. Or, I mean, I guess you could serve it like this. It's just really chunky. And the whole idea of the bisque is that it's just this beautifully smooth soup. And, um, oh, and we have to add cream. Obviously we have one more ingredient. So cream is what we add uh, after we have done some immersion blending and then that makes it really yummy and rich. Okay, our soup has been simmering for a while. Um, in the meantime, I transferred my bread bowls onto a cooling rack so that they can cool a little bit faster and more complete. And now it's time to take my immersion blender and try to smooth my bisque into the creamy deliciousness, smooth deliciousness that we want. Um, now this was gonna take some time because the more you do the blender, the smoother it's gonna get. And the crushed tomatoes from the can of crushed tomatoes has those little bitty tomato skins and you want to try to get those all smoothed out. Um, so we'll start doing my immersion blender and it takes a good solid five minutes I would say of this and then you just have, kind of have to test it and see how smooth it is. So here we go. Okay, now one thing I do want to tell you about tomato bisque soup is it's a really nice base for other soups. It's not truly a minestrone base, but if you added pasta and beans or sausage and kale, you could take this basic recipe and um, jazz it up all kinds of ways because this has not become the true bisque because we haven't added the cream to it yet. So you could stop here and add your beans, pasta meat, whatever, spinach, you know, whatever you like in soup. Um, and then you'd have a really nice tomato soup. I'm going to taste it because I have a feeling I'm going to need more salt. Um, earlier I added about another teaspoon and I'm pretty sure it's going to need some more. Yeah, I'm going to do another teaspoon or so. And I'm going to do another teaspoon or so of um, a big clunk of um, 
sugar. I don't know, maybe I'm just used to a sweeter tomato soup. I don't think I am, but um, I really, I don't want it to taste too acidic and I know I'm gonna add the cream, but I'm gonna taste this again. And I think I'm almost ready to add my cream. I mean, I could blend it forever, but um, I'm pretty happy with how it's looking here. So I don't wanna burn my tongue on this super hot soup. In fact, I'm gonna turn the heat down so that I can add my cream in a minute. So that extra teaspoon of sugar, I swear, like just makes it taste a little bit nicer and a little bit smoother. There's something about the tomato that is just harsh and that sugar just helps mellow that out. So um, when you're making homemade tomato soups, really try the different levels of sugar and see what works for your family. Um, you may need to add quite a bit of sugar, who knows, but it's, it's looking really nice here. So in just a minute, we are going to add our cream. We are ready to do our last ingredient in our tomato bisque. It is heavy whipping cream. So we're gonna add a solid cup of heavy whipping cream to it. As you can imagine, cream makes everything taste delicious. So then we're just gonna stir that in nicely. And that's what gives it its nice kind of soft orange, pale color that you're used to when you get a real bisque. So I'm gonna do one more taste test and then we are going to serve it up. Because now that I've added the cream, it'll probably taste just a little mellower and hopefully nice and salty. Mmm, it's really yummy. But I want more of that um, salt to bring out the flavor. You will be amazed when you start cooking from scratch how much salt you need in your food. Um, you know, restaurant food tastes so good because it's so salty and so fatty and that just has a good combination. So don't be afraid to add a lot of salt when you're making your homemade food because it really does make it pop and stand out. And that's probably what your family's used to, um, especially if you eat out or have a lot of processed foods. So just go for it to get them used to it. All right, so I'm going to move this up here, grab my bread bowls. So to serve your bread bowls, you basically are gonna cut a circle around the top of it. You want some of the top to stay in it so that your soup actually has like a top, you know, I mean, it has to stay in there. And then you just kind of cut through. There's your, your middle. So that turned out very nicely and you just dig in and you don't want to throw this away because it is delicious. I'm just going to have a little bit right now. Mmm. Mmm. It's really good. Okay. You can empty this and dig as much dough out as you want to. I like to leave, you know, like some of it around there so that you can actually enjoy it with your soup. And then sometimes I put it back on or put it right to the side. So now we have our bread bowl and our bisque is ready to be served up. You want to do bread bowls with thicker soups. You wouldn't want to do it necessarily with like a broth, a beef broth, but like broccoli cheese or um, creamy potato, something that's a little bit thicker um, that will kind of absorb into your bread is better. So there is your delicious bread bowl. Tomato bisque in a bread bowl, which is a pretty awesome recipe and um, dish for the fall season. All right, I hope you make this. I hope your family loves it. Um, I hope you enjoyed Box Free with Stephanie today. And I will look forward to seeing you guys next time. Thank you very much for watching. Bye.